the hungry are blessed the hungry are blessed I thought that meant there's a deficit I thought that meant there's a need I thought that meant there's something missing but he said you're blessed if you're hungry he said I'll fill you up <laughs> no matter what you need if you got a hunger for me I am your answer. I am your solution. Everything that you're looking for, you'll find in me if you're hungry for me. Blessed are the hungry. You know, today the Snipes family, I guess it was Mother's Day, I think Dad was baptized, gave his life completely over to the Lord. Just a few weeks ago, they were away from God, but now Mama and the daughters were baptized this morning. Someone say, thank you, Lord. Isn't that awesome? Come on. <laughs> Come on. And what God has done for anyone else, that you can mark it down, that God will do for you as well. Some of you have loved ones that are away from God right now. I want you to mark it down right now, that what God did there, He'll do for you. God's no respecter of person. Are you hungry enough? I said, come on, are you hungry enough to keep on praying? Are you hungry enough to keep on worshiping? Are you hungry enough to keep on clapping your hands and giving God praise? Are, are you hungry enough, enough to never let go and never stop and keep saying, I will persevere. I will see the glory of the Lord. Come on, are you, are you hungry enough? Someone say, someone say from your heart, I'm hungry. I'm hungry for you. Today, I have a... Desire. I have an insatiable appetite for the things of God and what He wants for me. Lord, I just need Your touch. I don't need anything else. I don't need anyone else. I need You. I need You. Just raise your hand all across this place and say, Lord, I'm hungry for You this morning, this morning. Up if you don't mind, I want to tell somebody right now that your life does not have to be what it is today. There is an answer. Jesus never said he had an answer. Jesus didn't say he could get you in touch with an answer. Jesus didn't say he would try to help you with an answer. Jesus said he is the answer. Yeah, yeah. Somebody will clap your hands. I said he is. The, he is your solution. Jesus was walking down Jericho. He was on his way to Jerusalem. He had plenty to do. He was on his way to the, what the week we call the week of his passion. And he was on his way. This was the last time he'd be passing through Jerusalem. And he's making his way through there. And there was a blessing waiting. Power enough to heal the sick. Power enough to raise the dead. Power enough to come against any malady. To relieve and set at liberty them that, that are uh, controlled by substances or whatever it might be. He, that power was resident in Jesus. And Jesus was passing by. And he would have kept on walking. And we never would have had this part of the story. Had it not been for a man that was known then as blind Bartimaeus. 
But you can't call him blind Bartimaeus any longer. Because you'd be identifying him by past season. Something changed. When Jesus came by, it got him excited and he got hungry. He said, you know what? I don't have to keep living like I'm living right now. I don't have to keep going. If Jesus is going to pass by, how dare I let him pass by without him at least having the opportunity to know that I'm here. And he yelled out, Jesus, is that you? I think somebody said you're coming by. Jesus, is that you? And, and finally someone said, yeah, that, that's him. That's him. And he said, okay, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy upon me. I need your touch. And he began to yell. And everyone around said, hey, listen, we're trying to enjoy this moment. And you're messing it up. He yelled even louder. He turned the volume up and screamed to the top of his lungs. He would not let this moment pass him by. Thank God for somebody with some tenacity to know I'm not giving up until I get my answer. Is there anybody in this house that knows that Jesus is passing by? And you can't afford to let it just happen. Let it just happen. You've got to interject something in this house here tonight. Come on. Today, right now, wherever you are, come on, somebody interject a moment and say, Jesus! Come on, somebody say, Jesus! Jesus. And guess what? Jesus said, wherever you are, come out. And the Bible says that blind Bartimaeus took off his coat. You can see they handed out coats back in those days to make you a legal beggar. You had to have a beggar's coat in order to be a legal beggar. And you know what he did? He slipped his coat off. And threw it to his friends. He didn't see yet. He had, come on, I said he didn't see yet. He hadn't even got a taste of America. Nothing. I mean, he still had to stumble to get to where Jesus was. He still had to say, "Would you excuse me? Would somebody help me?" But he knew enough that he knew that if he ever got in the presence of Jesus, if he ever was really tenacious enough to keep calling, he wasn't going to need the beggar's coat any longer. And I tell you, some of you are going to release some things here today in the presence of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Your whole life is about ready to change. He's here. If you're hungry enough, get on up here. I don't know what you got going on. You might be addicted. You might be unsaved. You might need healing your body. But get on up here right now. Somebody going to pray with you. Are you hungry enough to get your answer? Are you desperate enough to get your answer? It's here. Come on, come on, come on. All across this place. This is what to call. An old-fashioned altar call. Come on, get on up here. He's calling you this direction. He's calling you. I said he's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. Everything's about ready to change. Say, I'm hungry. I'm hungry for the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
probably pretty close to somebody. And I want everyone to be prayed for right now. Because you're going to pray with us right now. I don't want you to get near somebody. If you feel comfortable enough to hold their hand, that's okay. You can do that. Just a point of contact. The Bible says this. That when you seek the Lord and you're desiring Him, Jesus said this. Forgive. Forgive. And for whatever reason today, I feel an urgency. And someone just confirmed it right now to me just a second ago. That you need to forgive those who contributed to your mess that you're in right now. As long as you don't forgive them and let that go, that same thing. You're going to still have the ability to hang on. Jesus made it very clear. You've got to forgive them of their trespasses. That means people have trespassed against you. That means people were out of line. They were out of order. They should have never done what they did. But you can't let what they did stop you from getting what God has for you. You've got to let that go. I said you've got to let that go in the name of Jesus. And you've got to release it. Say it out loud with me. Forgive. Come on, say it out loud. Forgive. You want all that God has for you? You've got to forgive those that have trespassed against you. Now reach out to somebody around you with that concept. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word in this house. Oh God, we're not gathered here just to go through the motions. Something to do on a Sunday? Not at all. Way beyond that. God, you're going to do something so magnificent and so mighty. Lord, we can't even imagine. You're about ready to do things in people's lives, Lord, that will be testimonies not only today, but tomorrow, next week, next year, next, next, next decade. You're still going to be blessing in a mighty way. And Lord, isn't it? It's just it's crazy great what you're about ready to do in the lives of people here. As a matter of fact, the next generation will be able to celebrate the miracles that are taking place in the lives of people here today. You're bringing salvation to households right now. Lord, you're bringing addictions right now, Lord God. You're bringing healing to physical bodies right now, God. That healing to the emotions and healing to the mind, Lord. It's coming. It's in this house, Lord. Because we believe it, Lord. Because your word has never changed. Your word is still accurate. It never went away. There's no cessation of gifts. That's not in your word. You said, Jesus, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We take you at your word. And we know anything you ever did. You said greater things than what you did. We are going to do. So, God, we take you at your word. And our prayer is giving permission for divine intervention in the lives of men. And now, God, we release your power and presence according to what you ask us to do. And we take authority over everything that doesn't line up with your will and purpose. And we release now the joy of the Lord, the healing of the Lord, the peace of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, somebody clap your hands and say thank you. Come on, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I'm desperate for you. Yes, I am. I'm desperate for you. Lord, I need your touch. Lord, I need your touch. Feel your presence. And let your hearts cry. 
Lord, I need your touch to see your 